Savannah, I really appreciate uh, you coming on the show. Um, it's very rare that I get to speak with uh, someone that represents Cambodia, you know, and, yeah. you know, and especially in the MMA world. There are, uh, there is a big team out there in Cambodia, Cambodian top team, but for yourself, you know, living stateside, is it, is, is the community big with Cambodians in mixed martial arts? Um, I think it's starting to grow. Um, you know, especially, uh, I mean, like, but, uh, like Cambodian kickboxing is a lot more popular. So I think they're starting to transition now to MMA and, and playing with the grappling styles. So. Did you Sorry? start with, uh, striking or have you always been a, a grappler at heart? No, I, I started out as a boxer, just like, mm -hmm uh western style boxing so um that, that was my my first love and then um, a couple of years into training boxing i decided to give jujitsu a try and uh, it all kind of just like snowballed from there your first fight i saw a uh, uh, somewhat grainy footage of on that <laughs> and you getting like a a quick knockout like a real knockout not mm -hmm. a tko but like straight sleep like the girl was asleep on the ground. Uh, was that the boxing? Yeah, yeah. I would I would say so. that's because I mean that's pretty much all I had in my like. I mean I trained jujitsu, but um, whenever it came down to taking care of business, like my boxing just kicks in. So yeah, lucky I had it there that day. The power that you have. Do you think is that is it mostly the technique that you've learned over the years, or have you always had that power since the first day you stepped into the gym? Uh, I think I always kind of just naturally been athletic just my build it is it was something I was always kind of like self-conscious about as a girl um but then you know learning proper t technique doesn't hurt either so uh, I think a combination of both those things you had a couple fights uh stateside then you got signed to one championship how did that all happen because everybody has their own story because one championship is an Asian promotion but they mm -hmm. found you somehow. How did they find you? Yeah. Um, so once I was about two, well, once I was two fights in into my pro career, um, I was kind of figuring out. You know, people are always asking, like, "Oh, you gonna is your goal to, to go into the UFC?" Um, but I was kind of like pictured myself traveling abroad to to do these, um, you know, fighting is a, is a tough game. So if I can get some traveling out of it. Um, so initially we're looking at, um, some Asian organizations like, uh, Ryzen, um, uh, another one called, uh, I don't remember, but typically Japanese organizations. Um, but then we stumbled upon one, um, and, uh, we saw that there are huge in Southeast Asia and, you know, m me being of, you know, Cambodian, my, my parents immigrated from Cambodia. I thought this was a great opportunity to kind of like be able to maybe one day travel, like traveling abroad to Asia was never something I imagined I'd be doing and especially not to go out to fight. So I figured this was, this would be like the perfect opportunity for me to kind of, um, get back in touch with my, some of my Cambodian roots and, um, and, and it'd be awesome to like to just fight out there sometime. I know I know they don't do a lot of events out in Cambodia, but maybe one day we can make that happen. Yeah, well, you know, you you get you you've started already. You know, you've had uh, one fight with uh, the promotion. Talk about that fight and and flying over there because it's a long flight. It's not like a you know, it's not like going to New York or something. You know, yeah. it's uh, 10, 12 hours, uh, maybe even longer. And uh, talk mm -hmm. about the flight and, and, and the nerves and going over there and actually stepping in and uh, competing with a brand new promotion. Uh, no, I've been on long flights before. This one felt particularly long. I think maybe because it was super duper long. It was pretty brutal, but it was fine. I think I was just like so overwhelmed with the excitement of, you know, I'm about to have my first fight in one. I'm traveling to... Malaysia, where I've never been to before, which is another exciting experience. Um, this is my debut for a ginormous organization. So I was just like, I was just too excited to be too bothered by um, that crazy long flight. On the way home, I really felt it. 
<laughs> but um, yeah, uh, yeah, it, it was all just a, a fun journey. And then, of course, arriving to Kuala Lumpur, there was dealing with the jet lag. But um, luckily, I have my coach who's pretty on it when it comes to getting me into because you know we arrived there. I was exhausted, but we still. We uh, went to a gym and got my training in, and we did that every day up until the fight. So, but it got and, easier. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. You know, after a couple of days, I get, I, I think, I believe, you know, as an athlete, you just get used to it, and and you go in there and you compete. Um, now, stepping in from competing at local shows, regional shows, to this big production, you know, when you're stepping out, it's like music videos and you know it's crowds screaming you know it's just it's it could be overwhelming was it somewhat overwhelming for you but it didn't seem like it in the fight because you went in there and just steamrolled the girl yeah uh well that was kind of a question i had for myself too is like um uh, because i'm used to fighting local um uh, because i've never had to deal with jet lag or being in a new country um and fighting in this brand new uh, giant organization um, like is all this going to get to me is the the all the newness going to get to me but as soon as I was um, you know backstage warming up and waiting for my name to be called out uh, to walk out to the cage I was just I was just I was just happy and excited so um, it's just, I don't know it's like a it's just a big a general uh, I just I just love being out there so which is interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm more of a shy type. I prefer to kind of be under the radar, but when it comes to like fight nights, I'm like, I'm just like a totally different person. And I, I love the sound of the, the sound of the crowd. Um, I thought maybe that might've, uh, you know, freaked me out, but it totally just fed into the excitement. So the fight against Irina, was that, was, did that go as planned? Was that the game plan to go in there, to take it to the ground, mount her, and and finish her on the ground, or did you expect to stand and use your boxing more? Yeah, I was expecting to stand. Actually, we worked on um, my coach and I worked a bunch as uh, you know we studied some of her films, uh, some of her previous fights, and we noticed that she she tends to grab for the headlock. So we worked on everything we can to kind of like avoid that. And what, what, you know, what do you know, the first few seconds of the fight, she grabs my head. And I'm like, but luckily we worked on like, if that were to happen, how I'd react to that. And so I was able to, you know, work my way through it instead of being like surprised. So yeah, I was expecting to stand and trade, but I ended up getting my head, head grabbed. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think the women, especially the women, they love that headlock position? Uh... I don't know. I think that's just kind of like, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a common reaction. Um, even in like a street, uh, street fight, self-defense situation, people grab the head. It's just like people just kind of innately know that if you grab someone's head, it's just a good way to control people. So, um, I think it's just kind of like a subconscious reaction. Uh, not the most technical, but, um, you know, could could be could be annoying to deal with, and uh, you know, I can see the reason behind it. Um, it's a good the head is a great point of control. So, I don't think that's the first time one of your opponents have has grabbed your head. I, you've experienced it somewhat, right, in your previous fights. Yeah, I think in my second fight a little bit. It was more of a um, more of a clinch style head grab rather than like a headlock style. Um. Yeah. Um, I mean, luckily, I, I I was able to work my way out of it. Otherwise, uh, it would have otherwise it would have been pretty um, uh, uncomfortable. So you being in the Los Angeles area, Long Beach, talk about the the team that you have around you, and maybe some of the other places that you frequent. Because L.A. is just it's just booming with so many gyms and locations where you can train right with the top coaches in the world um can you mm -hmm. talk about your uh your main coaches yeah um so when i first started training like any kind of martial arts i was totally nomadic i was traveling everywhere i was doing boxing here or jujitsu here 
going to this other place for wrestling, going to a different place for wrestling, another place for judo. And, and I was having a really hard time finding a, one gym. Um, but finally, um, I did come upon this, uh, this gym here in LA called Fight Science MMA. And I was kind of training them with a lot, training with them a lot, uh, prior to my first fight. Um, but then I met my, my head coach now, Justin Hamilton. And, um, he's kind of, put me in contact with a lot of, with the, I guess, uh, so I'm training a lot at uh, my coach Justin's gym, Modern Martial Arts and Fitness in Pasadena, which is just outside Los Angeles. But um, one of the big things he did was he put me in contact with the folks down in uh, San Diego Comet Academy or 10th Planet, San Diego 10th Planet, Mm -hmm. which has uh, a solid handful of talented women, um, who, who, who fight, um, you know, you got people that fight out of the UFC, people that fight out of, uh, Bellator and they're women around my size. So that makes a big difference. I mean, finding women training partners is hard enough. Finding women training partners that are at an an elite level around my size, that's a whole different thing. So, um, it's training at, between training at my home gym at, in fact, I travel to San Diego, which, you know, traveling from LA to San Diego's, you know, about a two and a half hour drive. So, you know, we just try to self use that to supplement my training. Um, but yeah, I think that that's been like a, a huge thing for me. How are you structuring your camp then? You know, I'm pretty sure out of training camp, you just kind of go with the flow and do your thing. But when you get into mm-hmm. camp, do you have your coach organize everything or are you a, a, a self organizer? You can do it on your own. Uh, it's a bit of both right now. Um, uh, yeah, it's a bit of both. Um, I mean, it's still kind of a learning process because I'm, I'm still very new in the game, and, and he's also new in the coaching game. But um, so when it comes around camp, uh, I'm doing a lot of um, skills development, so taking a lot of classes throughout the week. But, uh, I mean, I'm doing that generally, but during camp, I put a focus on, you know, adding cardio, um, and, and more sparring sessions. So, you know, on top of all the skills training, I'm, I'm just adding, I'm supplementing it with the the cardio and, and putting all my skills training to the test with the, the sparring. Usually we go down to San Diego for the sparring. Are you a full-time athlete or do you have uh, another job that you, you, uh, you go to during the week? Um, yeah, prim- I'm primarily focusing on uh, my MMA career, but um, I also, you know, I went to school for digital media, so I also, I'm, you know, I'm a digital illustrator. I, I, I created a children's book last year um, that kind of teaches, like, parents and kids the importance of training martial arts in, in your development as a, you know, when you're a kid and, and kids kind of and also like uh martial arts kind of has carries a bad reputation that it it teaches kids to be aggressive whereas uh, i wanted to show people that it's actually quite the opposite teaches them about honor and respect and 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 uh discipline and such as that um so yeah uh, and also um as a digital artist i uh help my boyfriend out with his podcasting stuff so i'm like you know, I, I, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades when I'm not um, training training MMA. Wow, that's a, there's a lot of things going on right now in your yeah. life. Uh, <laughs> that's it's good. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, can we, can, where can we find this book if someone wants to buy it? Uh, it's on Amazon right now, but um, we were hoping to make it like a huge thing, but it's kind of had to take a back seat. We were hoping, you know... Because we have all these various little animal characters, and they they each um, represent a different martial art, and um, and we're hoping to make it this make it this you know big thing. But hopefully, I would love because I love the project so much. So I'm hoping you know the people that I, I that helped me create it, we can get together again because everybody's kind of busy with their lives at the moment, so it's kind of on hold. But you know we're we're still talking about it, but uh. It, the the first book is on um it's on Amazon so I can I can send you the link um yeah so 
thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely send me the link and I'll put it on the descriptions and everything and people can check it out. Sure. You know, it's always good to support the fighters, you know, wh- whatever they're doing outside. If you support them in the cage, you got to support them outside the cage. Why not? Yeah, you know? yeah absolutely. <laughs> All right, now let's let's talk about your uh, upcoming fight, your return to one championship, December six in Malaysia. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's fun to. Was your where was your last fight? I don't I, I don't really remember off the top of my head. It was in Malaysia too. Okay, so you're returning to Malaysia now. Mm-hmm. Did you expect to go somewhere else? You know, you mentioned earlier that you wanted to travel. Yeah, we we're kind of hoping to, you know, there's all these one does all these events in various countries so it'd be cool to like see a different country but whatever we're it's been a year since i fought so i'm just glad to to get to get a fight and uh and also kuala lumpur last year was just so amazing and the people were so welcoming so i'm more than happy to go back there and and maybe reconnect with some some old faces that i haven't seen in a while yeah now a year why the long layoff why take so much time off um uh, well, I mean, we were kind of just waiting to to get a fight. Um, I mean, some things would kind of come up and then something would somehow just fall through. So kind of all year I was kind of just trying to stay ready because we would kind of get news for something and then it wouldn't work out or, you know, an injury. Um, but, you know, uh, as much as I would have loved to get like, I was hoping to get like two or three fights this year. Um, it was it was, it worked out because I had plenty of time to kind of just work on my, my own, uh, on building my own skills and strengthening some fundamentals because, you know, um, I kind of jumped into this pro MMA game really early. Um, so it was just, I think I, I think I, it just worked out well that, um, we had this time to kind of develop on, on some things that, you know, maybe, maybe lacking. So, uh, we always know that, you know, I have my boxing, but, you know, maybe there may be holes in wrestling or jujitsu that I could always work on. So I, I feel like a totally different fighter than I was a year ago. Well, just looking at the footage and kind of knowing your background, you have a scary skill set, mm-hmm. you know, for, you know, for the division that, you know, the, the flyweight division. Um, mm-hmm. I, that's why I wanted to talk to you, you know, because I've seen your fights, you know, I've seen your debut and I was thinking like, when is she going to return so I could get her on the show again? And did you know, you popped up. So uh, you know, I'm happy. Uh, cool. But yeah, you you have that power, which is something that is very, very rare. And then you have that strong base in boxing. Uh, and and mm-hmm. if you really look at it, a lot of the girls don't really kick. So, you know, having mm-hmm. hands is going to be very useful uh, facing the top you know girls in the division you know but you slowly work yourself up you do have a fight coming up soon now if you look at this fight what do you know about your opponent you know have you studied her have you looked her up or are you just like it doesn't matter i'm just gonna go in there and do what i do yeah um so i typically it takes me a while before i i like to see any footage of my opponent usually i leave that up to my coaches Mm -hmm. And he develops the, the game plan for me and develops the training around um, and, the, and the game plan around how we're going to uh, approach this fight. Um, but yeah, now I've, I've just started watching some more of her foot of her fight footage. And um, she, she tends to, so she tends to be like, you just mentioned like women don't typically kick a lot. She tends to have more of a Muay Thai style um, preferring kicks and uh, kind of sitting back and looking for counters. So that's kind of what we've been um, working on, working on, kind of uh, game planning around. So it's a little uh, 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 like a Muay Thai specialist versus a boxer, uh, which is always going to yeah. be exciting if you put anybody yeah, totally. like that against each other, right? So I think this is a, a sleeper fight on the card, you know, like. You guys are like early in in the night, but I think a lot of people are gonna get uh, a good fight out of this. Um, I'm pretty, yeah. you know, you seem like you're very excited. You guys are both undefeated, so that's also mm-hmm. something there, you know. And uh, yeah. and and actually, you showed in your last fight that you could go to the ground and and just pound and ground and pound. Do you do you like the ground and pound 
Or do you like to just stand in there and uh, sit in the pocket and just throwing hard? So when I first started, uh, that was definitely my game, was just standing and being a boxer and dancing around and, and peppering my opponent with uh, with, with punches. But um, these days I've been kind of favoring, you know, just taking the person to the ground and, and then it seems easier. Like they're just in one space and then you punch instead of chasing them around <laughs> and punching them. So yeah. <laughs> and like they can't more. counter you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just sit right there and let me hit you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It only, if it only was that simple, you know, that you could just go out there and do I'm, that to I'm everybody, right? <laughs> but, but you know, I know what you're saying. It's uh, yeah. if you can do it, if you can go out there and do that every single time, why not? Why not? Even if they know that you're going to do it, why not go out there and do it? And, and uh, yeah, it's always going to be exciting. Everybody always loves somebody that can go just take it to, the, you know, look at Khabib. He just mm-hmm. takes him to the ground pounds on them and then mm-hmm. they don't you know submit to the punches and then he's gonna choke them out right so yeah. if you can bring that style bring it you know everybody's gonna watch it they're gonna love it um yep, yep. like you said you wanted to keep busy this year but you know it didn't work out next year uh do you see uh yourself you know kind of pushing more to fight you know instead of kind of just sitting back and developing you because you know taking that time to develop yourself is important but getting that mm-hmm. cage time is more important, you know? So Absolutely. are you going to make that push next year in 2020? You feel like, you know, I got to get every fight, just stay ready and just, you know, maybe even fight every two months. Cause it seems like some of the, the women, they fight very often. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's definitely the, the, the goal. I mean, like I said, I was hoping to do that this year, but kind of, things kind of fell through, but it, it worked out anyway because I got to develop some skills. But yeah, I'm hoping, like, I'm just glad I got to close out this year with a fight. And then I'm hoping that um, it won't take as long for me to get my next fight and hopefully, um, you know, get two or three fights in the, in the following year, in 2020. And also, it, it will help when uh, one championship they're talking about going stateside in 2020 yeah and you're already there mm-hmm. so hey you know they have no choice yeah. they gotta put you on that card <laughs> yeah absolutely 